Hey guys, it's Mark from drybuildsystem.com. Today I'm gonna to do a bench install on our dry build system. And I'm also gonna give you guys some pointers along the way, so uh, hopefully that'll help you out. This is what you're gonna receive. This is, we call this a pickup block. Um, it's got two sensors that sense water. It comes with about six feet of, of lead. This is the actual control unit. That's what it looks like. It's got a little reset button and a little digital display. Go through that in a bit. I also include six feet of power lead. You may or may not require this. And also, um, this is our high capacity filter comes standard in our new version. Uh, this is the version 8.4. It's new this year. Made a few changes, a few improvements. Um, and that happens to be one of them. And then we get our marine grade pump with it as well. So let's get into that. Um, for demo purposes, I have a small battery here that I'm going to uh, use to power this. What you want to do before you start, um, first of all, you want, your get, you want to clean your bilges out completely. You want to get them pristine and as clean as it can be. Because once you install the system, you're not going to have that grum grunge and grime in there anymore. And you don't want this filter to be clogged up with all that stuff. So. Clean it up really good. As soon as water gets in your bilge at all, it'll get sucked out and it should be nice and clean water at that point because it didn't have time to grow algae. So let's start. The instructions for the wiring are actually on the box itself. I hope you can see that. So it says blue wire. That is our power input. Input power, polarity not sensitive. Just two of those. Doesn't matter how you hook up, positive or negative, it's automat automatically going to rectify itself. And then we have a yellow water. They all wires. Those are for the uh, pickup block. So these will hook up to this. And then we have a black and red wire. Those ones there go to the pump. They are polarity sensitive. So you want to make sure you connect the red wire to the red wire and the pump, so on and so forth. So let's start off. Um, one thing I want to say is don't hook up your power. Don't hook up live power without the rest being hooked up. Because if you touch these two wires together and the pump hap happens to cycle on, it's going to blow the fuse that's inside this control panel. Um, on the other side of the circuit board, there is a fuse there. So if something were to happen and lights go out, you know, you're possibly went a shorter to wire or did whatever, um, you'll have to replace that fuse. So let's get started. Let's unbox this. Here we go. In case you guys are wondering how long we've been selling these for, this has been in development for about eight years. Um, we took it to market probably about three years ago to the point where we were really serious and we were actually selling some volume. Um, we took our time with it. We wanted to make sure it was just right before we went ahead with uh, making a whole bunch. All right, so let's hook up our pump. It's a simple little pump. And here's our two leads. This pump can actually uh, suck up to six feet. Uh, manufacturer recommends four feet, but we've tested it and, and it'll do six feet quite easily. Um, what that means is it's not the distance from the pickup block to the pump, but the height. So you don't want to mount this 12 feet up and have it try to suck water 12 feet up to it. It's just not recommended. It's not meant for that. So you're good to, uh, you know, four feet and, and under is, is quite okay. So let's start that off. Let's see. Put our wire here. These are really handy. If you don't have those, you should get some. They are awesome. Twist these together. Now, this is what I recommend using. You could use whatever you want, but this is the ones that I really prefer. These you crimp on mechanically, and then you heat them up and they shrink on and seal 100%. So I'll show you how to do that on one of these leads, and then uh, the other ones, I'm just going to do them real quick with a standard crimp on just to make things quicker and easier for you. So let's strip, strip. All right. Pump wires. While we're at it, let's do our sensor wires, do them all. All right, so just grab these, give them a quick twist so they don't fray on you when you're stabbing them in there. Slide that in. 
like so. Try to get in as deep as you can. And crimp them. You can use anything you want, electrical pliers. I have these fancy deals here. Um, it really doesn't matter, so crimp on the one side. Make sure that's solid. And do the same thing here. Press that in there. Crimp it on. Okay, you're gonna get that little tug. Make sure everything's solid. It is. And then you're gonna use your heat gun. You can use a little butane torch or a lighter. I prefer a heat gun because there's no chance of actually burning the wire or less chance. It's a lot, a lot easier to do it this way. Um, I'm hoping you can see that, but just basically heat it up till, uh, till it shrinks on. Pretty straightforward. I know this is kind of boring, but for those of you who've never used these kind of crimp terminals, that'd be very helpful. It gives you a nice watertight seal. So you never have to worry about corrosion getting in there. And you just heat that up basically till, uh, till it becomes clear. And then you know you got a good bond to the wire. That's it, that's all. So, I'm gonna try to be quick here so this doesn't take too long. I'm gonna put those on. Again, do not hook up your power first. Hook that up after you've done all this stuff. All right, pick up lock leads. They're no polarity to them, of course. Pretty hard if there was, because they're both the same color. So do the same thing here, strip these back. Split them a little bit. There we go. This could be a little bit trickier because uh, this is a very small gauge, so I'm actually gonna poke this till it's stabbing out the other side. And then I'll put that one next to it. And I'll crimp it on. One side's gonna cut the wire, the other side's just gonna be onto the casing. Give it a little tug, looks good. Let's do that one more time. So again, these wire here, it's a single strand wire. It's pretty small. If you put it in there and try to crimp onto it, there's a good chance it won't grab. So if you push it all the way through so it's to the other side, then it's next to the other wire. Stab that in there. They're basically right next to each other. When you crimp it, it'll compress that whole deal together. A little tip there. There we go. So, we have our pickup block, as we call it. Um, the wire's hooked up to that. And we also have, we just need to put our power on. We have our pump already hooked up, so we can go ahead and hook up our power leads. I'm gonna go get some pliers to cut the tie wrap off this. I'll be right back. All right, I couldn't find my wire snips for the life of me, so scissors it is. Chop that off. Unravel this. Put that aside. And our power lead. For demo purposes, I just set up a power lead with some alligator clips so I can hook it onto my little battery here. Fast forward through this for you, so it'll be done. Okay, so we got those wires on there for you. I fast forwarded the video so you don't have to watch me do that. Ready to hook up power. Red to positive, of course. Black to negative. And away she goes. Um, when you put power to it, it will cycle for 10 seconds and then stop. So we're just gonna wait for that to stop. There we go. When it's cycling, it's actually gonna go in a circular motion. And when it's stopped, it's gonna read clear. So there it is, it's, it's just cycling clear over and over. And um, that's sort of the function of the LED. It'll also, if the pump runs for more than five minutes straight, it'll go to a fault mode. Typically, if that happens, it's because your filter element's clogged. You're gonna wanna take this apart, spins apart, clean it out, put it all back together, and you should be good to go. All right, so from the pickup block, we are going to connect our filter. You can cut this wire any length you want, any length you need. 
So that's pretty simple. We're just going to push it on. The hard part is hooking this up to the pump. Now the pump actually is directional. There's a little arrow on top here. So you're going to want to make sure that you're having it feeding in the right direction. So you want it to suck from this. So it's going to have to go on this side. That sure doesn't look like it fits, but it does. It just it takes a little bit of uh, sneakiness to get it on there. Heat gun again, you could use a lighter for this. You can use a little butane torch. Again, I like the heat gun. This is a handy tool. So you're going to want to heat it up. And then you have to heat it up for a crazy amount of time, but you're going to want to get the end of it hot enough that it becomes very, very malleable. So it's almost melting a little bit. And it also helps if you grab a little bit of dish soap, which I have here on the side, and lubricate this a little bit. And then you're going to want to grab that and see how flexible it is now and just slide it on. So I made that look really easy because it actually is that easy. Um, but if you don't heat it up, it's not easy at all. <laughs> so I've had some people tell me it's impossible to put that hose on there. Well, impossible is a, it's quite the word to use. Everything's possible. So again, this, if you try to put it on without, it, it's next to impossible. I mean, you might be able to get it on there, but it, it's pretty tight. A little bit of heat, a little bit of soap, and uh, it just slide right on. So I'm gonna put that close so I don't know if you can kind of see that. See the edge is getting shiny. Like at that point there, it becomes very flexible. So again, little dab of soap on here. Makes it slide on a lot easier. You can use spit if you want, whatever you want to use. And, if I got close enough, you just wiggle it on. It's being difficult for me here. There we go. Just as I'm telling you how easy it is. <laughs> So once you put this on there, there's no, there's no need for clamps or anything. It'll, it'll dry and uh, it'll cool off, I should say, and be very tight. So that's it. I'm put that on there. We're pretty much ready to go. So that's going to be our discharge hose. That's what's going to send the water out of the boat. I'm just going to throw that down there because I'm actually in my garage. So it's okay if I put water on the floor. There's a control unit and our sensor. So let's get some water set up here to show you how this all works. Get my tools out of the way. Here's our boat bilge for demo purposes. My glass of water. So you're gonna wanna mount this at the, uh, the lowest point in your bilge. Now to adhere it, I mean, it, it's going to want to just slide around. There's a few different options. You can put a dab of silicone on here, pin it down, let it dry. That's one way. Um, if you have a bilge hose or something nearby that you can actually tie wrap this hose and kind of pin it down, that works really well as well. That's what I ended up doing in my, my personal boat. So we're just going to sit that down in there. And I'm going to grab the camera so you can actually see this in action a little bit better. Here we go. As soon as water hits those two probes, it'll suck it completely dry. And that's it, no more water. It'll run for a few more seconds. It basically runs for 10 seconds to make sure there's no water left. And that's it, like that is, you know, there's nothing left in there, it's dry. Let's see that again. If you're wondering how much water it takes to trigger it, it takes about 3 16 of an inch at the probe. So you're gonna wanna put that in the lowest point in your bilge. And away she goes. So that's it. Pretty simple. Um, I think in most part, that's all that you really need to know. Oh, discharge hose. Let's talk about that for a minute. This little hose here, by the way, is not provided in the kit. I do sell it on my website. The reason I don't provide it in the kit is because you might need 10 feet, you might need 20 feet, you might need 50 feet. This hose here, the discharge hose, you can make it as long as you want. And it's not gonna be a problem lengthwise because the pump can push as much water as you want it just has a hard time sucking water uphill so so to speak um you can all you can put this into your shower sump so that little bucket that your shower when you take a shower it goes into a bucket and it pumps it overboard you can drill a small 3 8 hole pop this on top that's one option another option is on the top of your boat like um over your engine hatches let's say usually in the corner you end up with a drain hole that goes through a through hole fitting 
you can tap into that. Now you're not going to want to tap in that, that hose kind of goes like this here into your, to the through hole fitting. You don't want to tap into the bottom of that because then every time you get rainwater, it's going to leak out around that, this fitting here. You're just going to tap into the top of it. For that, just grab a screwdriver, basically stab a small hole and uh, poke that in there. So that's another option. You can actually, you know, get an actual designated through hole fitting if you'd like to do it that route. Uh, that's really up to you. Some people have mentioned they'd like to send it through the uh, sink. I would recommend you don't do that. Not that it's really loud, but you'll, you're going to get gurgling sounds. So I'm going I'm to show you that again. So once it's done pumping, it has that gurgly, you know, air and water sound. Um, I personally would rather not hear that resonating through my sink, but that, that's really up to you what you want to do with that. So that concludes our uh, demo, guys. I hope that's very helpful. And uh, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. Thanks.